Hi, we're here with Laura Schiff of Ville Platte, Louisiana. And Laura has a very nice table with a little bit of history. <laughs> it's an old table. It's a table that had a lot of use. My father built it about 1945 with hand tools. They didn't have any electrical tools or anything at that time. And then when my daughter got married in 1978, she used it in her kitchen for several years. Your grandchildren told me that they remember this table oh, too. Oh yes. They were at home a lot when they were growing up. So I'd make picnics, I'd call it for them, and they'd enjoy that very much. I'd cook and we'd hold everything on the table for them to eat outside. So this table has... It had a lot of use. A lot of use, and apparently it's not just a table, it means something to you guys. Well, it means something to me because my father had built it. Your father built it. I think a lot of people like a table like this. So let's go in the shop and make one. Here's my version of Miss Lurie's table. This tabletop is three pieces of antique born siding. I've joined them together to eliminate the crack, but I've rounded over the edges slightly just to maintain the appearance of the individual boards. On the base, the legs are turned to the same profile as Miss Lurie's table, and the apron has a bead just like on Miss Lurie's table. I fasten it with cleats into slots along the apron. The stretcher is fastened to the apron with sliding dovetail joints. We'll get a closer look at that later. Here's the material for today's project. This is an antique cypress sill beam salvaged from an old barn. I'm gonna get the legs for the project out of this. The apron and the stretcher are gonna come from this recently milled cypress. It's a very good, high quality cypress. This is antique born siding. This will become our tabletop. This is the material we've chosen for the top. If you remember, on the original, it was a 28 inch wide by 48 inch long top. I have plenty of width here, but the boards are way too long. I'm gonna cut them to rough length and we'll work with them from there. I'll cut these a little long for now. After getting the edges straight, I'll trim them to the final length. Now that I've got my freshly jointed straight edge, I'll set my fence and run it through the table saw to get parallel sides. Okay, I've cleaned up the last bit of glue. We'll set this aside and we'll start on the base tomorrow. We're gonna begin our base by turning the legs. As I mentioned before, they're gonna come from the cypress sill beam. The first thing we need to do is machine three and a half inch square blanks, take those blanks to the lathe and turn them to profile. Using this duplicator, I'll start by rounding the stock with a gouge. With the template installed, I'll use my pattern following knife to make shallow, gradual cuts until the follower meets the template profile. Keeping the follower tight against the template, I'll move slowly and let the knife do the work. There's still room for hand tools to clean up and get crisp, sharp edges. On my leg, I cut a three quarter of an inch wide mortise, so I'm going to need a three quarter of an inch wide tenon. I don't want to cut too much off, then my tenon will be too loose. I'd rather cut it a little fat and walk it in until I have a nice, snug, but not too tight fit. Perfect. Well, here's my version of Miss Lurie's table. It's gonna be a popular project because since we started, I have orders for five. Now they're from my daughters, but that's okay. Because 65 years ago, when Martel Fuselet made a table for his daughter, he thought he was building furniture. But what he was really doing 
was making tradition. For detailed plans and video instruction, visit www.makingtraditions.com.